Okay. <coughs> Thank you all for coming tonight. Tonight we're going to be going through four PowerPoint presentations and then I will be giving you a little bit of insight and answering a few questions after I've finished. Okay, so we'll start off with the first one of how you got into the system and how it all came about. So in the beginning, God created man. Now I'll give you a totally different twist on this after I've finished the video presentation because God did create man, but you'll, you'll see man created government and corporations. But somehow the roles have been reversed because the structure is corporations, government, they totally control the government, man, we're down the bottom, and maybe if there's anything left over, we've got a little bit for God. So we're going to briefly explain to you how this happened, and you will find this um, on the it's about the fourth page, I think it is. Fourth page, you'll find the little printout there. No, you didn't get one. I've got one there for you. Uh, no, th this is just my own. Um, there you go. If anyone hasn't got one, it's it's. Oops. Check. What happened there? Okay. Your father or your mother registered you with the Birth, Deaths and Marriages and Re Relationship Registration Act 1995. And this is what it says. Births in New Zealand to be notified and registered. Every birth in New Zealand shall be notified and registered in accordance with this part. Oh, okay. Now, if you have a look at this document, this is actually mine. So you can see that I was born round about when the dinosaurs were still um, <laughs> still roaming. <laughs> so we're going to examine this, and what you will find is that the law is purely. Come on in. Just walk around the front, don't worry. You're a TV star now. <laughs> it is the interpretation of words. The law is only the interpretation of words. So we're going to have a look at some of the words on here and see what it means. Now in column two, you will find that you were born because if you have a look at the document you've got, you'll see that you can see I was born and where I was born. Sorry, I'll, I'll go back one there. The second column, Christian or first names only. There's, there is something else written underneath there, if you can see it from back there. If child stillborn to be noted in this column. So we need to know what the difference is between a Christian and a first name. Do we or not? If we're going to fill this form out, do we need to know the difference between a Christian and a first name? <laughs> we didn't give them much thought though, I can tell you. There's a Christian professing belief in Jesus or Christ or following the religion based on the life and teachings of Jesus. Two, relating to or derived from Jesus or Jesus' teachings. Three, manifesting the qualities of the spirit of Jesus, Christ-like. Relating to or characteristic of Christianity or its adherents, showing a loving concern for others, humane. Okay, that's what a Christian is. So we better find out what a name is then, I guess. So. The easiest place I've found, if you don't have a law dictionary, is to go to Bovier's online. I've, I would thoroughly recommend 
Butterworth's Law Dictionary if you want to know what the laws are in New Zealand because that has been invaluable in cracking the code, I can tell you. But Vauvier's is a free online dictionary, so feel free to go on there. But there's some interesting, interesting things in here, and you'll see in the, the highlighted areas, no man can have more than one Christian name. Well, Jesus of Nazareth. Paul, did, did any of the disciples have more than one name? They were Christians. You can only have one Christian name. In general, a corporation oops, must contract and sue and be sued by its corporate name. Okay, now we do have a corporate name. If you read the bottom bit, these bits you probably won't get for a start, but later on as you study these things you will see. It is said that in devices, if the name be mistaken, so when you go to court or when you go and register for anything, your name is definitely mistaken, I can assure you. Okay, but more importantly, in column three, after, if you have a look on there, it says, if child stillborn to be noted in this column. So why did my father put me in that column? He killed me by putting me in that column. Yeah. Column three. Oh, shit, I do that every time. No, no, I had my finger on it. I was just suggesting use the keyboard instead of the thing which you can Oh, I can stand up. Mm. <laughs> okay, so by entering me into that column, my father has killed me. When, in law, when you die, you become a deceased estate. Okay, so let's have a look what stillborn actually means. So we'll go to Butterworths, which is because the law is relevant to New Zealand. Stillborn child. The Birth, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act 1995, Section 2, provides that stillborn child means a dead fetus. Dead fetus? That weighed 400 grams or more when it issued from its mother or issued from its mother after the 20th week of pregnancy. So what's a fetus? Is that a child? Could, could be the afterbirth even, okay? But however, once you are, once you are declared dead, and your father has declared you dead, then something else has to happen. Now you will actually see that in the, um, the next page of your printout. It actually goes, no, the next page after that one. No, 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 so just, just keep, keep going. You'll so see. If you were still born, your father would write still born instead of Christian name in that column? It says, if child still born, enter in this column. Okay, and in what in this column? Still born. Hey, I'll, I'll carry on with the show, and, and you can take what you like from it. I'm just giving you what I have discovered, because if you look at the next document, you will see exactly what has happened. They, they go, then go to the Legitimization Act 1939 to legitimize what they do. Plain and simple. Okay, column five on the, on the document father and marriage details. Okay, now we've already dealt with name, haven't we? But we've got rank or profession, we've got age, and we've got birthplace. Now, we've suddenly gone from born on the very first column to my father's had a birthplace. 
marriage details when married where married previous issue anything that is highlighted yellow in here is very very important to look at and we will be looking at those so we've already covered the name so now we'll look at profession this word has several significations one it is a public declaration respecting something code it's always interesting when they put a code because a code is they only know what the code is it is a state art or mystery as the legal profession in the ecclesiastical law it is the act of entering into a religious order it's rather interesting isn't it profession previous issue now we highlighted issue here we go with issue this term is a very extensive import and you've got no idea how extensive it is in its most enlarged signification and includes all persons who have descended from a common ancestor but when this word is used in a will in order to give effect to the testator's intention it will be construed in a more restricted sense than its legal import conveys okay so we'll have a look there's more it's also a pleading an issue in pleading is defined to be a single certain and material point issuing out of the allegations of the parties and consisting regularly of an affirmative and negative in common parlance issue also also signifies the entry of the pleadings okay so issue has got a lot of things now if you can actually get your head around this here you will know how the whole court system works this is in issue but as no jury is summoned to attend this court the fact is usually directed to be tried in a court of law upon a feigned who knows what feigned is not pretend, pretend not real a feigned issue for this purpose an action is brought in which the plaintiff by a fiction okay so he's bringing in the fiction which is your all caps name dares that he laid a wager for a sum of money with the defendant <laughs> sounds good doesn't it for example that a certain paper is the last will and testament of A and that's all they do when they go into court I'm telling you section 49 of the district court act will show you exactly what they do but uh, anyway then averts it in his will and therefore demands the money now who's the defendant in most cases us these feigned issues are frequently used in the courts of law by consent of the parties now they trick you into consent it's rather interesting but there's more from Butterworth's Law Dictionary now this is the part that we really really want here the act of delivery is an issue emission and sending children or descendants generally the normal legal meaning of issue in the context of testamentary now you notice testamentary testament everything is done by testament because they're dealing with dead people we were killed in the first column so everything will be about death and if you don't believe me next time you sit with the lawyer he'll give you an undertaking to do something so just ask him when did he turn undertaker everything they do is about death Uh, includes descendants of every degree not only children okay gets more interesting though and the bits in yellow are the ones the profits of land and tenements you'll remember from last year that you are the land from the dust of the earth God created man from the dust of the earth we are land okay 
G'day. The point or matter issuing out of the allegations and pleas of the plaintiff and the defendant as to an issue before any court under the Immigration Amendment Act, I'm not really concerned about that one, the putting out of banknotes for public circulation is an issue. But here we go. Of a bill of exchange or promissory note, the first delivery of the bill or note complete in form to a person who takes it as a holder. That, I can assure you, is a bill of exchange. This is what I got. If you can see, oh, can you see through that? Yeah. Can you see the um, columns? No, can you see the, um, the lines running down it? That's security paper. Why would they put a printout on security paper? That's only a printout of what your father registered. That is a security, folks. <clears throat> Hence what, what I told you at the beginning. You mean security like a mortgage? No, security. We are securities. I can explain about mortgages, but... Uh, okay. Column 8. Information. Here's where they laid the charge. If anyone's ever been in any trouble with the law, the first thing they do is lay an information. Okay, so if you look at column 8, you'll see that my father didn't act as father, he acted as informant. And by acting as an informant, he laid a charge against me. An accusation or complaint made in writing to a court or competent of competent jurisdiction charging some person with a specific violation of some public act. It differs in nothing from an indictment in its form and substance, except that it is filed at the discretion of the property of the proper law officer of the government, without the intervention or approval of a grand jury. In summary proceedings before justice of the peace, the complaint or accusation, at least when the proceedings relate to a penalty, is called an information, and it is then taken down in writing and sworn to as the object is to limit the informer to a certain charge in order that the defendant may know what he has to defend. Okay, so your father has killed you because he laid a charge they then issue a bill of exchange on you. Now you need to know this, I'm telling you, because after that document comes the next document which I showed you is the RG142. Now good luck trying to get that. Good luck trying to get that one. We got it by accident. I don't think we were supposed to get it. <laughs> I, I had been giving this information out to people to go out and get theirs. I'd already got mine and one person who does things slightly differently, uh, hey Lil, <laughs> does things slightly differently decided not to go and he'd ring up and request it over the phone so he rang up and requested it and he got that form and that's his name on there so please do not make that public those two documents I've given you are private to me and to the other person named on there but that document shows you what happened after your father filled or your mother filled out the registration they then had to you were dead so they then had to put their processes in into place to charge you. Okay, so the document that legitimizes that is called the RG142. And as I say, good luck in trying to get it. We've got one. They can't get my one. Um, the, so I've asked them for a letter. 
that I can pass on to say that they could not find my one. Some others have, haven't been found too, haven't they? Yeah. Okay, now we need to know what a security is, don't we? I'm telling you all these words, so you need to know. So from Butterworth's Law Dictionary, something that secures or makes safe, I don't think that's what we need, financial. The Securities Act 1987, <coughs> Section 2D, provides that security means any interest or right to participate in any capital, assets, earnings, royalties, or other property of any person, and includes an equity security, a debt security, a unit in a unit trust, an interest or right that is declared, there's another word I, I should have highlighted that, declared by regulations to be a security for the purposes of the Act and any renewal or variation of the terms or conditions of such interest or right. So you've learnt how you got put into the system, now you've got to learn how to reverse it if you want to get out of it. If you want to do it this way, there are, other, there are dozens of other different ways I can assure you. One that I just found out last night too, which... <laughs> make a declaration of what you want. Register on PPSR. This puts a lien on the title and on the birth certificate. Now, there was supposed to be a guy here tonight who can put you on the PPSR. Unfortunately, he's in Australia, so Bruce over there, who I introduced earlier, wave your hand, Bruce. I didn't say stand up, I just said wave your hand. Goodness <laughs> me. God, show pony. <laughs> <laughs> if you see Bruce afterwards, he's got the name uh, of the, um, the guy who will um, be able to put you on the PPSR, if you want to go that way. Okay, but that does secure the title. And I was telling someone earlier that when you put things on the PPSR, and I'll show you, show you in a presentation a bit, a bit later on, if you know what you're doing, there's nothing they can do because that is a public register absolutely nothing they can do. My rates at my, in my house are uh, about 38,000 the last time I looked. They keep trying to keep trying to get them but uh, they've got two shows. For people foreign born, uh, any particular comments on how to deal with their various... Don't know. Yeah. Now you must notify the Ministry of Economic Development, if you have a look in there, you'll see, no, inside, keep going, keep going, you'll find a letter there to the Ministry, keep, just keep going until you go, get to the Ministry of Economic Development, there it is there, now at the bottom of that, you'll see that I have not only notified the Minister, I've notified two people right at the very bottom there, I was just telling you about my rates and that's why, why I pointed it out. So I've notified them and I've also notified the registrar who signed the document. I forget how much I've got against them. I think it might, might be a million bucks or something like that. That's why they won't come after me. Anyway. So you must notify anyone that you are going to put a lien against. We will go through that, that that'll be the um, that'll be one of the next presentations, so don't don't panic. Now here's the here's the regulations where it says debtors to be notified of change demand, a person to who who is not the sole debtor and who enters a change demand in the register must as soon as practical give notice in writing to each debtor to whom the finance statement relates. Okay? So you must notify them. If you don't notify them, you ain't going to go anywhere. Now the Personal Property Security Act says, once you've notified them, when security, when secure party to notify the debtor about registration or financing statement, the secured party who registered a financing statement or financing charge statement, or on whose behalf a financing statement or financing statement change has been registered must, not later than 15 days after the day on which the verification statement was received, give to the debtor a copy of the verification statement in accordance with the regulations. Okay, so if you are going to put 
a lien against your title you need to notify now it's not Jerry Brownlee now it's changed so you just need to find the Minister of Economic Development that's an old lady you'll see but they keep changing the uh, ministers meaning of knowledge this is this is the section that they must know for the purpose of the, this act an individual knows or has knowledge of a fact in relation to a particular transaction when that person has actual knowledge of the fact or receives a notice stating the fact now I'm going to be giving you some some information in the uh, next video which will show you an organization knows or has knowledge of a fact in relation to a particular transaction when the person within the organization with responsibility for matters to which the transaction relates has actual knowledge of it okay so it is vitally important to let them know a government department knows or has knowledge of a fact in relation to a particular transaction when that fact has been brought to the attention of a senior employee of the government department with responsibility for the matters to which the fact relates under circumstances in which a reasonable person would take cognizance of it. You all clear on that? Okay, you've seen now how they got you into that. Now it's a pretty quick run through on it but once you've sat down with the DVDs and looked at the looked at the regulations you will see. Now on your thing of, of, on the first page there I've said what, why a declaration is important. I'll just give you a little bit of history and this may clarified. Back in 1835 a few of the chiefs got together and decided to make a declaration and they declared that they were sovereign. So from, the, from Thames to the top of the North Island is a sovereign nation. Still is to this day. If you want to be a sovereign, you have to do exactly the same thing. You have to make a declaration. You have to declare what you want. If you want to grow your own dope patch, you declare it. You have the right to do anything you want as long as you make that declaration. If they don't come back to you within the, the time limit that you have given them, you register it on the PPSR and they cannot do a thing about it. So if I drew up a document, the, uh, the Declaration of Bud Dependence, and I you used it as a uh, justification to go out and grow marijuana, that would work if I declared Absolutely. Mm. The qualifier is that you must register it on the PPSR. You must. You must notify the Ministry of Economic Development You must surrender your birth certificate. Okay, you do not need to. There are other ways, I've told you, there are other ways. I'm going to relate a story to you. Now, you've, you've got that, um, you, you saw my security, it's on security paper. Bloke in Canada, this is on, this is on YouTube. Bloke in Canada got one of those, sent it to the Governor General, oh sorry, went down to the uh, local car dealership and got the VIN number off a car, sent it with that down to the Governor General, said please put this into a lodial title in this name. That's why I've got me, myself, and I in there. If you have a look at the second page of that, you need to know me, myself, and I. Is that because you need two witnesses? No, no, you need to know what words are. You need to know what words are. So if you've got it in this name, 
30 days later the title arrived in the mail so he went down to the car dealership and the car dealers told him to rack off car dealer called the cops cops came down and he handed the title to him and the cops said to the car dealer you must give that man the car the car dealer admitted later that he'd been paid 15 days earlier for the car the guy showed showed the um, uh, sorry the guy then said to the cop now if I drive off here it's not registered <coughs> warranted or anything like that will anything happen he said it's yours to do what you like okay so what I'm saying there are dozens of different ways that you can go about getting into the system I know some others in Canada who have gone real quiet now but up until um, January <clears throat> we're in constant thanks to your um, YouTube they, they contacted me from all over the world um, Interesting side note, I was looking at the most viewed videos on my channel. Out of all the videos we've done, you're like number 10 or something. Yeah. Out of 800 videos. What, what happened was he gave me some very, very cryptic clues. They have done it through the Inland Revenue over there. Okay? They've, they've got their escape through the Inland Revenue. There are dozens and dozens of different ways, but you do need to know what I've given you tonight by securing, by securing the PPSR, okay, putting a lien on your title is absolutely vital. So you could do it with a house, anything? You, you need to go and read first. You can't register houses on the PPSR. Okay, you can surrender your birth certificate. That's how I got out the first time. You can, there are dozens of different ways. Now, we did this last year. We surrendered our birth certificate in accord and satisfaction with the Trustee Act. You need to look up what in accord and satisfaction is. Very interesting. Trustee Act 1956 Trustees or the majority of trustees having in their hands or under their control money or securities belonging to a trust. Did I show you a security? Does it belong to a trust? It certainly is. You're, you are an, an estate, a trust. Okay. May on filing in the court nearest to which they are or the majority of them reside an affidavit describing the instrument creating the trust. Have I shown you those instruments tonight? Okay. The two instruments that are in there are the two instruments that created the trust. We surrendered our birth certificate. We did it wrong. <laughs> I'm one of the guys who's out there just firing shit at the wall because I know some of it's going to stick. Most people are too afraid to do anything. I just go out and do it. And I've paid the price. <laughs> and giving particulars of the persons beneficially entitled under the trust according to the best of their knowledge and belief. And on serving a copy of the affidavit to the secretary to the treasury. Uh-oh. Seems like you hit the jackpot if you do that, doesn't it? Pay the money or the transfer the securities to the Crown. Later on you will learn what the Crown is. And you will be very surprised. Okay. In the matter of the particular trust, which shall be described in the affidavit by the names of the parties as accurately as may be for the purposes of distinguishing it, all monies and securities so paid or transferred shall be administered by the Treasury. They're going to administer it for you. All you have to do is access it. Couldn't be much simpler. All such money and all money delivered from securities which have been transferred to or vested in the Crown under this section shall be credited by the Secretary to the Treasury to the trust account established under Section 42 of the Public Finance Act to be dealt with hereafter as provided in this Act. 
doesn't get much more simple than that if you want to go in at this level. The receipt of the Secretary of, to the Treasury shall be sufficient discharge to the trustees for the money or securities paid or transferred to the Crown. Okay, The moment he receives it, that is sufficient. You don't have to do anything else. But, right, we've got up to surrender your birth certificate. I showed you how to do that. Learn your rights and start doing everything in the private. Now, this is where we haven't cracked it yet and this is what we are just starting to learn now easy to get out of it now we've got to forget all the laws we've learned and start working out how the private works now in line with this you will see and it's on the first page of you it says the, the these six lines are vitally important here it is the Wills Act. All property may be disposed of by will. So the moment you make a declaration, it is my will, your property can be restored to you. But you do have to know how to access it. Can be done. It is being done all the time. There are certain people, I won't, won't name names because this is going to go on YouTube, but I can tell you that in New Zealand there are certain people who suddenly became fabulously wealthy and getting around in super yachts and that sort of thing. There is no way those people earn that through business, I can assure you. They have accessed their trust accounts or been invited in. They have this done for them. They just... From this point... Okay, it's that simple. The commerce game. For far too long, we've operated on one side and haven't known about the other. So hopefully tonight, I'll give you a bit of insight and some of you, some of you may recognize some of this. Now look, guys, the best way to move ahead in any of this is to share your information with other people. The more you share, the more you will learn. Okay? Oops, I should have put the crown one up first because I've uh, given away what my last <laughs> one's going to be, the crown. On the private side is the sovereign, the crown, and the live person. On that side we have a dead entity, dead in law. It's an estate, a deceased estate. So when the baby is born, it's born on the sovereign, the crown side. Now you know what happened to the poor little bugger. Father registers the baby. Government acknowledges the registration and issues a birth certificate. Now how come you didn't get a born certificate? You now know that middle document, the one I showed you, in between the registration and the birth certificate, is the giveaway. That's the one that changes you from born to birthed. And it should be spelled B-E-R because you are birthed into the maritime law. Certificate. Another dead giveaway. Practice. A writing made in any court and property, uh, properly authenticated to give notice to another court of anything done therein or it is a writing by which an officer or other person bears testimony that a fact has or has not taken place. There are two kinds of certificates. Those required by the law, your birth certificate is required by the law, and those which are voluntary. Of the first kind, that's the ones that are required by law, are certificates given to an insolvent on his discharge. No, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying, what? An insolvent given on his discharge? Keep that in mind. And those given to aliens that have been naturalized. Guess what you are at the moment? You're an alien that's been naturalized. 
Okay, because the next part is going to give it all away. Voluntary certificates are those which are not required by law but which are given of the mere motion of the party. The former are evidenced by the facts mentioned therein and while the latter are <laughs> the former are evidence of the facts therein mentioned while the latter are not entitled to any credit. <coughs> oh as long as you have that birth certificate you're not allowed any credit and that's what you want all, the, all you're getting at the moment is debits so the moment you undo now I've already shown you in the first one how you undo that you are discharged you are the insolvent has been discharged and then you're entitled to your credits This may be above some of your heads at the moment, but don't worry, it will become clear. Okay, so now we carry on with the, the live-born child. Government sets up the trust in the public, in the family name of the newborn baby. This is administered by the public trust. The government holds the title, and as long as they hold the title, they can do what they like with it, trust me. Because the title is an honour addition to a person's name, implying that he or she has some honour, office or dignity, land or goods, a party's right to the enjoyment of land or goods, so we're entitled to the use of our body, Or the, we, or the means whereby such rights has accrued and by which is evidenced, or the means whereby an owner has the just possession of his or her property. Now I can tell you that you have possession of your house, your car and everything, but you don't have the title. Which is the title? The one that you're going to send back. The birth certificate is the title or you're going to put a lien against it. You decide what you want to do. You can do it just by putting a lien against it and then getting credit from it. You can surrender it, you can do all sorts of different things. You do not have to, there's horses for courses, whichever level you want to go to. Issue of a certificate in lieu of a Crown Grant. Now you saw earlier on that I said the Sovereign, the Crown and the the live person because we got issued a certificate a birth certificate they did not bother to give us our crown grant crown grant may not be issued for any land subject to the provisions of this act now I've already told you you are land that's another one of the deceptions and and the matrix says how many rabbit holes you go down God it's only taken me nine years to bloody find all this out married to a computer <laughs> all right two the issue of a certificate of title under se subsection one when signed and registered or recording of information in the register under subsection 1b when affected has the force and effect of a crown grant so what they're doing is giving you the certificate in lieu and saying that is your crown grant it ain't I can tell you you can get your crown back by declaration of your will. Okay, so on the left. What does DOE mean? Sorry? Uh, as the word DOE, what do you think it means? Oh, who cares? It's just a, sur just, just a surname. Just a surname. Um, now, someone, someone just told me. Uh, that I may actually have this wrong but I'd already finished this so I wasn't going to go back and do it all again but they were saying that the credit credit side is the right hand side and the debit side is the left hand side does anyone know if that's in accounting credit and debit sides I could have it wrong but for the purposes of this exercise realize that there are two sides to the ledger public and private credit and debit okay so on this side is a private trust where everything is free you don't believe me everything's free in 1933 the government took away our ability to pay or to make payment 
all right gold coins were the only means of payment can someone remind me to bring up dollars can someone remind me bring up dollars when I finish this okay on this side is private trust where everything is free this side of the ledger is public and allows Mr. Doe to operate in commerce government holds title to that trust <laughs> good idea while government holds title to that trust then Mr. Doe is nothing more than an unflagged ship on the sea of commerce so they are allowed to plunder that ship trust me right we know the private trusts on that side on the other side we function in commerce and afforded government protection and trust me they do protect you you get knocked over by a, by a car out there you got ambulance down there they'll race you up to the hospital someone comes and beats you up the cops are there they will look after you that's their function because they have to protecting their investment absolutely their security okay owns nothing and has the right of possession only and must register for benefits but you're also an employee of the government and this is what people don't realize that when you're an employee of the government you are subject to all their rules so what you think those statutes are is actually company policy so when you do not abide by company policy they can come and smack you and they do <coughs> must follow company rules okay on the private side where you're alive you do have inherent rights but in order to function on the after that one did you want to no 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 after the after the um is there a whole series of these yep yep all right just a little bit longer patience my patience young man <laughs> okay to operate in commerce you need to register for your benefits bank account now here's how it happened well I know when when I was young the first thing that I entered into the government system was my post office savings bank did everyone open a bank account was the first thing that they did what did they ask you for sorry birth certificate but it says on the birth certificate not to be used as a means of identification so why do they ask for it because they want to put you into commerce they want you to function in commerce okay so the second one is normally a driver's license normally in New Zealand anyway once again what do they ask you for birth certificate but once you got your once you've got your driver's license yoo-hoo everything comes after that then they can give you passports they want your driver's license and a birth certificate and then your inland revenue number your car registration everything that you apply for is in commerce under your birth certificate inherent power an authority possessed without it being derived from another that's yours folks it's an inherent power it is a right ability or faculty of doing a thing without receiving that right ability or faculty from another it is yours by right you've got it on the last page of your of your um, printout the wills act okay everything you do it by declaration and you take all your property by your will and an inheritance estates a perpetuity in lands to a man and his heirs or does a right to succeed to the estate of a person who died intestate so when you filled out or when that form was filled out and your father killed you had you written a will did you die in test state? So now you must, by your will, claim everything back. Pretty simple. 
Registration, the act of making a list in a register, particularly of an official character. No, 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 at the end of this, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> in which the existence of something or state of affairs I I is... To you. No, 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 you got to, you got to, you just hang on to it there. State of affairs, a statement in the prescribed form of assets, debts and liabilities. Good thinking, Russ. Do you want to put it over here, mate? Oh. Just put it over here. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Creditors' names, addresses, securities held by each creditor which must be submitted to the official assignee where the High Court has made an order or of adjudication in bankruptcy. Okay, that's a state of affairs. Okay, we now know that we've got a private side, we've got a public side, we've got a private trust, we've got a public trust. Registration created those, those trusts and they operate side by side. Understanding that will help you understand. So you will need to know a little bit about trust law, okay, but there is a grantor, there is a trustee, and there is a beneficiary to any trust. Now, why they have, why the government has made, or the papers have beat up so much on beneficiaries, is because they don't want you to be the beneficiary. They want to be the beneficiary of your estate. So that's why beneficiaries have got such a bad rap. Okay, you want to be a beneficiary, I can assure you. You will see. <laughs> okay, on the public trust we have the administrator and we have the trustee. But who is the beneficiary? <coughs> this will all become a lot more clear when I get on to the crown one, but what happens is that they're operating over here and coming over and getting you to be the trustee. The trustee always pays, trust me. The trustee always pays. So instead of being the beneficiary, because they want to be the beneficiary on this side, but you want to be the beneficiary on... So, oh, sorry, someone gave me a thing. The laser pointer on the other side, on the black folder. Here we go. That's what you want to be there. Because over here is the one that the government's always complaining about. The beneficiaries, the solo moms, the bludgers. Trust me, when you get over this side, and there's a lot of them on, that are on that side of the fence that are actually enjoying that. But all the lawyers and courts and all that are coming over here, getting you to act as a trustee so that they can be the beneficiary. If you don't believe that's the case, a friend of mine was in court recently and I said to him, look, you just sit down and don't say anything and I will go in and do it for you. So I walked into the court and the uh, judge says, who are you? And I said, I'm Bill. I said, I'm here on behalf of the Crown. And she says, oh, Mr. So-and-so up the front here said that he's here on behalf of the Crown. I said, well, he's an imposter. <laughs> he's an imposter. <laughs> and so I walked up with uh, the PPSR filings, and she's, don't come near me with those papers. <laughs> and I said, not coming near you. I said, I'm giving them to the imposter down here. Well, I'll tell you what, normally, normally the lawyers all go, ha, 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 who's this guy? They were all in shock, <laughs> absolute shock. Anyway, I walked up, and I dropped the papers down on him, and then the fun began. She, um, she tried to um, have me arrested and all sorts of things. She came to the aid of the prosecutor, who was only a young guy, and his eyes were like saucers, mate. <laughs> they were like that. Absolutely terrified. Anyway, so that is, that is what they are doing. They're acting as trustees over here and Coming, coming after this and getting you to be trustee over there so that they can duck down here and grab that. That's exactly what they do. So they pull a switch so they get the benefits from both sides and you get, and oh, you yeah. get the crap from both sides. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, the private, so the private side. The private side 
once sovereign, the crown, the live person, which is upper and lower case, is the common law, the law of the land. And it is the new covenant. Okay, now, trust me, if you learn to access this side, I'm sure everyone will want to stay in the new covenant. Jesus died to forgive us our debt. So, why not take it? That side, there's a lot of pain over there. I might challenge I might challenge you a bit more on this one later. <laughs> the Holy See. Okay. The grantor of the private trust is the living man and woman. It's the only way that it can be. It really is. The trustee is the public trust at the moment, okay? Because we have been vacant. The grantor is dead, it, it's only on paper. The trustee, they want you to be that, trust me, they do. But if you surrender your birth certificate to this side, oops, there, to the trustee there, and told you in the, in the last one, what section was it? <laughs> Sorry, I've given you a brain overload, haven't I? Section 77 of the Trustees Act. So who are you going to surrender your birth certificate to? The trustee. Whoops. That'd be a shame, wouldn't it? You become the beneficiary. As beneficiary. because you're now going to be operating in the private. Now it may be as simple as a stamp. We haven't done it yet. It may be as simple as that. But um, I have been waiting for my final document to come, which is the RG142, and it hasn't arrived yet. They say they can't find it, so I'm just going to go ahead and lodge my papers again, and uh, then I might be silent. Don't know. We'll see how it goes. This is all going on YouTube, so. Next step, if it if it's to be, it's up to me. The next step's up to you. And the one thing that holds all of mankind and its powerful grip. Okay. Money. Thanks. No, no, <laughs> kidding. Okay, um, actually, I'll just. Ooh, that's bright. Um, just going to turn this off, and I'm just going to show you how the the trust thing works, because. Oh. Do, 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 do. Where did that come from? I thought I turned that off. No, 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 because no, it takes takes too long to um, power down and up again. Yeah. Uh, How about no, no. Just, uh, turn it the other way? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Now I told you the um, that there's two trusts operating side by side. Can you see that, or do you want black? Shit. Hey. Yeah. Oh, I'll put the light on, yeah. Far out. Geez, that, that'd rip your undies, wouldn't you? I, I bought these ones. They had $5 ones. And um, I thought, no, I'll get the expensive ones because they'll be better. $19 and they're rubbish. Okay. Now... Seen that before, haven't you? 
Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Same thing, settler, settler of a trust, grantor, um, administrators, um, yeah. Oh, geez, I'm good, aren't I? <laughs> okay. In that earlier doc document, you'll see that your father gave his only begotten son... And the only way to come to the Father is through who's the Holy Ghost, isn't he? They explain everything in the Bible, but they've just made it into such a parable, such a nice story, such a nice code, that no one's twigged onto it. So for the Son to come to the Father, he has to go through there. <coughs> I'll stretch some boundaries tonight, I'll tell you. Okay? That might also be sun, for all we know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, which is your surname. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. You're on the earth here, you're in the heaven there. On earth as it is in heaven, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, if you go, if you go to, oh, we're going to stop for a cup of tea anyway, uh, um, if you go to the Reserve Bank, they've got the keys. If you go to the Vatican, they've got the keys. <coughs> keys to heaven at the Vatican, the keys to hell at the Reserve Bank. They're down. They're telling you everything in these parables, I'm telling you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Everything is forgiven. We must forgive. Goodness. There is an R there, but anyway, grant, grant or it's the same setup. Okay, what you're doing, all you're doing, as as the beneficiary, the um, the name is you're coming through, you're coming through the name to go there. So you have to come in as the child of God. to enter the kingdom of heaven. We'll have a break and have a cup of... Okay. Hopefully, hopefully with what... You going all right? Yeah. With what we've learnt in the first two, it may give you some indication of who you are and what your power is. Now... We're going to try to, oh, goodness me, um, <laughs> wrong one, wrong one. Some mood like that, that's good, that's good. That's good, that's good like that. Yep. Okay, starting again. <laughs> right, the first two videos we tried to uh, give you some idea of where your power lay and what you can do if you actually decide to access that power. Now I'd like to just show you a 
few common things that kind of happen in your everyday life that you need to be aware of and so that when you know what is going on you will not get caught out by this again and I know that many of you in this room have been caught out by these things so now on the front page of your um, of your printout there a quote famous famously attributed to Rothschild Rothschild agent Colonel Edward House but rarely understood except by one man in a million envisages people as collateral on the national debt that's what I've explained to you tonight very soon every American will be required to register their biological property your body in a national system designed to keep track of the people and that will operate under the ancient system of pledging I showed you how your father pledged you charged you on the on that document by such metho methodology we can compel people to submit to our agenda which will affect our security as a chargeback for our fiat paper currency every, Amer every American will be forced to reg or register or suffer not being able to work and earn a living they will be our chattel and we will hold the security interest, of, interest over them forever by operation of the law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. Americans by unknowingly or unwittingly delivering the bills of lading. I showed you it was a bill of exchange, did I not? To us will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent. Exactly what I've explained to you forever to remain economic slaves through taxations secured by their pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given a commercial value designed to make us a profit. And there will be none the wiser, for not one man in a million could ever figure our plans. Oopsie, I think I did. <laughs> and if by accident one or two would figure it out, we have in our arsenal plausible deniability. After all this, after all, this is the only logical way to fund government by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and privileges. Did I not explain that in the second video, how you must register for your benefits and privileges? This will inevitably reap to us huge profits beyond our wildest expectations and leave every American a contributor to contributor or to this fraud which we will call social insurance without realizing it every American will insure us for any loss we may incur and in this manner every American will unknowingly be our servant however begrudgingly the people will become helpless and without any hope for their redemption and we will employ the high office of the president of our dummy corporation to ferment this plot against America if you can decipher what this means, you will truly understand a massive piece of the global agenda. Essentially, House's quote elimina illuminates the multiple need for imposing legal person status upon us by the satanic ego-worshipping elite. The straw man, also known as the legal person or natural person, is the idea that a fictitious legal entity called a person exist for purposes of law and commerce. This person is similar to a company or a corporation in that it exists as a construct of the imagination. It has no real body and no soul to save but for legal purposes carries similar rights and attributes to that of a human man or woman. Person allows us to function with limited liability. Does that kind of show you what I've shown you in the first two videos? Okay, that was written in the 1930s. When America took away the gold standard, the only means of paying, and foisted straw men upon us. They gave that to us in, uh, in the Wizard of Oz. The Tin Man is the tax identification number. The straw man had no heart. Gave it all to us. Okay, moving right along. 
I am sure that some of you have received a letter from a debt collection agency and done nothing. I'm sure you have. I have. <laughs> you are in big trouble. Okay, because what happens here is a debt collection agency will buy a bad debt. They buy the debts from credit card companies, banks, car dealers, whatever. The debt collection agency sends a letter to the debtor, which is you, Have you ever heard of a distress warrant? Because that's exactly what it is. It's a distress warrant. So, when in doubt, go to Butterworths. An enforcement process. All it is is a process. A distress warrant is only a process. And if they follow this process to the letter of the law, you're gone, burger. Okay, so it's an enforcement process by which a judgment creditor can levy distress against the goods of the judgment debtor. The District Courts Act 1947, section 84, 85, provides that a warrant of distress requires the bailiff or constable to whom it is directed to levy or cause to be levied such sum of money as is directed to levy or cause to be levied such sum of money as is adjudged or ordered to be paid a lot of jumble, isn't it? Okay. For the enforcement of the judgment or order by seizure and sale of the goods or chattels. Okay. <coughs> enforcement process. Oh, can you read that? Yeah. Enforcement process action authorized by court to enforce a judgment debt. Very, very simple. The High Court Rules 17.1 and 17.3 provide that enforcement process includes an attachment order, charging order, sale orders. There are only orders. But because you have ignored the distress warrant, a certain process of law takes place. Don't do it, folks. Levy. Practice a seizure, the raising of the money for which an execution has been. Now, didn't I tell you that they all they spoke about was death? Execution. <laughs> Everything's about death in the system. It's all about bodies, undertakings, executions. In order to make a valid levy on personal property, the sheriff must have it within his power and control. Ah. Oh. Hang on to those words. Or at least within his view. And if, if, if having it so, he makes a levy upon it, it will be good if followed up afterwards within a reasonable time by his taking possession in such manner as to apprise everybody of the fact of it having been taken into execution. The usual mode of making levy upon real estate is to describe the land which has been seized under the execution by meets and bounds as in a deed of conveyance. Now I can tell you folks, if you've got a um, uh, a mortgagee sale coming up, <clears throat> describe the land which has been seized. It isn't the house and it isn't the dirt which the house is sitting on. They have a security over you and they have a security over the other piece of paper which is called the title to the land. Those are the only securities they have. So if you take a photo of your house, put on a piece of paper with a letter to them and say, would you please identify the property that you have the right to sell as being this in the photograph and they can't do it okay this process I'm going to show you here you can put a lien against them we're doing it now at the moment in Tauranga 
okay? Because when you reverse the process, they are just as subject to the law as what you are, which we'll see later. Okay, although the letter you receive may not concern you too much, the process which follows should, because it will. This is the process that is used to obtain, obtain judgment. Documents of title. Any written instrument, such as a bill of lading. We've already seen that, haven't we? We've already seen documents of title. I've given you three of them. A warehouse receipt or an order for the delivery of goods that is in the usual course of business or financing is considered sufficient proof that the person who possesses it is entitled to receive, hold and dispose of the instrument and the goods that it covers. That's all they have is a piece of paper. Nothing else. But they trick you into believing that it is the house that you're living in. Documents of title. A record enabling the possessor to deal with the property described therein as if he or she were the owner. <laughs> all the time you thought you were the owner. You're not. But as long as you're in peaceful possession of that home, they cannot touch you. But it's far better if you put this process against them. Doc warrant. A document given to the owner of goods imported and warehoused in the dock as a recognition of his or her title to the goods. That's all we are, folks. On the bills of lading and the other proofs of ownership being produced, like a bill of lading, a dock warrant passes by endorsement and delivery and transfers the absolute right to the goods described in it. A dock warrant is within the definition of documents of title in the Mercantile Law Act 1908 and is also within the definition of documents of title to goods in the sale of goods. Dock warrant. Isn't that what the judges issue? A warrant of arrest, they issue a bench dock. Warrant. Eh? Bench yeah, bench warrant. The letter that you receive from the DCA is the is in the form of an affidavit doesn't look like it but there are claims in that letter in the form of an affidavit they don't do it the same way that we do we swear this and we swear that but that is what it is it's a it's a distress warrant and it is in the form of an affidavit and the maxims of law are very clear about affidavits an affidavit is the truth in commerce an affidavit must be rebutted point for point and an unrebutted affidavit becomes the judgment in commerce. If you have not rebutted the debt collector's letter point for point in a timely fashion then they automatically have judgment against you. Automatically. There's nothing you can do about it. The court process which follows is only to record the default. That's all it is. They've already got the judgment. Now we can do exactly the same thing, I can tell you. We can turn it against them. Should anyone fail to answer your letters, you can use this process. When you send a letter as the first part of your commercial lien process to your bank, credit card company, who, whoever include a sworn affidavit they will not be able to rebut it folks okay they will fail to rebut your affidavit point for point you then have a friend send them a notice of fault and opportunity to cure it's a three-part process okay after three days you can then issue a certificate of default this is exactly what they do. 
but then they go to the court and have their order enforced or their judgment enforced we don't do that uh, he, here's the letters here they're probably a little bit hard to um, this is one that I actually did up the names and addresses have been changed for obvious reasons but um, um, yeah I'll just leave it up there I'm not going to read through it all for you but this is one that I did I'm sure Vinny might be able to do something. Now, well, what I'm doing at the moment is just uh, kind of uh, trying to read it off screen. I don't that that there is what we uh, said the amount was owing, and then we claimed three million plus legal fees and damages. So the whole lot came to fifty-nine million. No, it was no. 17, uh, 13 million or something like that anyway. <laughs> okay, so you must have a some well, certain... One thing that happened when they, these um, collection agencies send you a, an affidavit, as you call it, which it isn't really, because they bring up a point of law. Yep. Points of law make an affidavit inadmissible. Yep. And they always say under the um, whatever consumers... Protection Act or whatever, you have to do this. That makes it inadmissible in a, in a court of law affidavit to contain facts. No references ever to a point of law. Laws for the judge to decide, facts yep. are for the jury. Yep. I, if, you, if you'll notice, I said is in the form of an affidavit. It's not actually an affidavit. No, I did. It's not witnessed by someone. Absolutely, and, and I did say that. It's in the form of an affidavit. Okay. Okay, notice to respond. Now, you and Lynn did 21 days exclusive of. You don't need to give them 21 days, they, they give you 10 days or something like that. It's also mandatory that you and Lynn did respond to the f foregoing. It must be by delivering any response to Joe Bloggs, Lynn Clement, blah blah blah, mailing location as shown below. Okay. The next one is the notice of dis default in dishonour. Now, I've got I've got copies of these, and I can I can actually. You can just email them to me. I can blow them up. Yep, on he can he can put them up on the screen. Okay. And this is the certificate of non-response. Okay, so that's that's done now. We normally get three people to um, sign them, don't we? Uh, three people to sign those. That was another one that was just done before a notary, and the not notary actually signed that one. Now here's where everyone has failed to act, because once you do this, you have, you have, you've already got the judgment against them. When you register it, then that is the order. We do not need to go to the courts. All we need to do is publicly notify them on the register. All they are is a court of record. We're doing the same thing. We're using the public record to register against them. Now here's the Biordi. This is your judgment. Right. <laughs> Don't you love that? Okay, so if you make sure that you put a higher amount than what than what they're claiming, then you discount the debt to them, and the ju the uh, debt collection agencies jump into it. Now, unlike their process, yours is is genuine because you have put an affidavit in. Theirs is all make believe. It is all make believe. Trust me. <laughs> Whenever they make a claim, in fact, I, I've got a couple here, I think. I love them. Look at them. <laughs> All the window envelope. Oh, oh, dear, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Haven't even opened it yet. Just have a look and see what it is. Oh, it's only a letter, bugger. 
I thought that would be a, a bill. This one, this one's one. I beg your pardon? What this sends here a state trust. state trust and the trustee is liable. What, what a state trust? Well, you know, when, it, when they send it to you and it's all capitalised letters. Yep. Okay, and you're not the trustee, so you're not liable. You know, I mean, you're not the debt. I'll tell you what, I, um, I just came across some stuff last night which. Um, has totally changed. These these things at the bottom are checks. Have a look on the back there. Have a look on the back. Does that look like a check? I've got I've got the um, I've, I've actually got the um, New Zealand thing showing you how checks are supposed to be made and that. So I've just got to research it. Um, I might bring it up on the screen in a minute. But anyway. Have a look. You can pass this around. This is um, this is one of my um, bills that I don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> they always come in asking for. I think it's fourteen hundred or something like that. Have you ever noticed every bill that you get? They only ever come in with things like this. Yet when you write a check, you've got to put If you don't put that on a check, what happens? They won't cash the check, will they? Because there is an important word after them. And if you don't have that word written, now telecom's really good. Telecom says write the amount. Can you see that? Is, is it too small? write the amount. You will never ever see that on any bill that you get. You will only see this symbol and things like that. Amount payable. Hey? Amount payable. Oh you'll see all sorts of things. Amount payable or uh, uh, demand. Rates demand? <laughs> it's only a demand. Uh, you know they <laughs> You're demanding money with menaces. If you don't pay it, you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, it is extortion. Why can't they ever write it like that and put dollars? Does it express the service? Hey? What we've in the box. What we have done. All tonight is define words. So what is a dollar? Is that legal currency? No, it's not. It, it, it is legal currency, but they cannot trade in it. They took away our right to payment. It's a silver coin. That's why they can never ask for dollars. Now, the moment that you're in court, and I saw this firsthand when one of one of my friends was in court, the um, IRD guy was asking for everything but dollars. He asked for the amount outstanding, the the sum owing. Uh, oh, he had all sorts of fancy terms for it, but never once mentioned dollars. So anyway, we came up to the recess and went outside and um, I said to, to my friend, I said, look, he hasn't asked for dollars. I said, go in there and just ask him what he's after. So what does he do? Everyone always takes my notice. I, it takes notice of me. I know that. They all take notice of me. 
he goes in and the judge says now what do you think it is and he says I think it's a hundred and thirteen thousand dollars now the judge who had just been sitting there suddenly bolted upright and wrote down he deposited dollars into the court so now he's gonna to have to pay in dollars they can never ask for dollars It's a silver coin. <laughs> Could you imagine walking into into the court with salt bags fulls and bagfuls of silver dollars? Not going to happen. In the US, if you've got 21 silver dollars that you can come up with, you cannot be a bridge bankrupt. Yep, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now you know. <coughs> why they can't do that but here's here's the bit now happened to someone in this room got a um, got a claim against them in the district court and um, came to me and asked if if I could help him out and I said yes yeah. so I sat down and had a look at it and this is what it said I'm just going to... God, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> I was hoping to keep that there, but it doesn't matter. Okay, anyone ever had one of those? IRD or anyone? The plaintiff makes this claim against you. You are the defendant. Cool. Stunned silence. The plaintiff makes this claim against you. You are the defendant. So who's the defendant? Well, that's exactly what I asked them. Did you ask them, who are you? No, I said, said, the plaintiff made this claim against you, but you've given me the papers. <laughs> <laughs> you as the defendant, but you've given me the papers. <laughs> <laughs> they had 30 days to respond. Have they responded? <laughs> they can't they cannot respond it's um, a game of words folks so if they put you and then your name that would make a big difference they can't didn't, didn't you hear what I said in, that, in the first video under issue under issue all they're doing is taking a bet that you don't know who you are. And they prove it every time. They prove it. All the court is, is a gambling den. Now, I mean, this will come as a surprise to you, but it took, took me years to get my head around this. It's a gambling den. Someone lays a claim against... Yeah. And you don't know that there's documents of title, and they're just playing this big game. Everything is about a charge. They're charging your estate. Nothing is real. It's only a gambling den, I can assure you. The prosecutor writes down a, a charge, and he takes it to the registrar, who is the roulette wheel manager. She's the croupier. And he says, do you think this, do you think someone will take this bet? Yeah, yeah, I reckon they will. So they then put that out and you've, you know what the bond markets are. 
the 90 day bonds yep I'll put that out as the 90 day bond so it goes out onto the bond market so 90 days later you appear before the court and then the next appearance is another 90 days they keep going out as 90 day bonds it's a gambling den they believe that they're going to get that money out of you plain and simple <laughs> bit of a wake-up call tonight isn't it Of course you can. Of course you can. I've just shown you what they do. You open it up and you have a look at it and see if it's addressed to to you or to Bill. Okay, it will be addressed to Bill, but they this is how they give it away. The plaintiff makes this claim against you. And you must rebut that's in the form of an affidavit. It's not an affidavit, it's in the form of an affidavit. They're making a claim against you, not against Alfred, not against Bill, not against Vinnie. It's against you. So if you're dumb enough to step up and say that you are the defendant and start arguing it, you're down the river because then you play by their rules when you get into their courts, into their gambling den. And I'll tell you what, the old, uh, the old gambling master up the top there, mate, he's the bank manager and he makes sure. Why do you think he comes to the aid of the prosecutor? Is that why they call it a courthouse? Because the courthouse always wins? It, it's actually a temple. Well, it's a Masonic true. temple. Well, that's true. Okay, it's actually a Masonic temple. Lights, camera, action. Okay, the last, the last presentation now is uh, the crown. And once again, we're going to stretch your boundaries. Does anyone know for sure? Who thinks it's Queen Elizabeth? It's like the what? East India Trading Company. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the Crown City of London? I'll go for that one. Hey? I'll go for that one. You go for that one. Is it the Queen and Right? Yeah, should be. <laughs> or is it someone or something else? I'd say the Queen and Right. You'd say the Queen and Right. So, hope your pockets are full. Can we uh, can we have some wages here? Let's <laughs> insist on donations. I, I okay. We're faced with a problem, we go to the dictionary. Okay, so I'm from Butterworth Law Dictionary, which is my Bible. The reigning king or queen in the capacity of sovereign, often signifying the executive government. Okay? Often. Not always. Hold on, Lillian, I'll just get my often signifying the executive government under the crown. So what's under the crown, I wonder? The prosecution in criminal matters for offences dealt with on indictment. I can tell you something about that too. The prosecution in criminal matters for offences dealt with on indictment they come in under section 49 of the District Court Act. They're only coming in as agents, I can assure you. Capacity, the ability to produce or perform issues, oh, we've already heard what issues are, haven't we? Relating to the ability or competence to perform, por, to perform certain acts arise in areas such as contract, criminal law, tort and agency. See the Miners Contract Act, okay? So, do you, now knowing what you've seen tonight, think you have the capacity to do anything? Yeah. You don't. You don't have the capacity to do anything until you do what I showed you in the first video. 
then you suddenly have the capacity because you are dead, you're an unflagged ship on the sea, they cannot hear you. Quite often we have got transcripts back from the courts where the, where the, the line says inaudible, we can't hear you and they can't. Sovereign, a chief ruler with supreme power, one possessing sovereignty, is also applied to a king or other magistrate. Oh, now we've got a magistrate. But here's a real clincher. In the United States, the sovereignty resides in the body of the people. In you. Hundred bucks. <laughs> Could be the best investment you ever make. Butterworth's Law Dictionary. That one's actually from Bouvier's because it doesn't explain that in Butterworth's, but you can get that online. Bouvier's, you get it online. Okay? Well, some of the words, some of the words, the ones that are in Butterworth's are specific to New Zealand. Bouvier's is sort of worldwide. And yeah. Blacks is worldwide. That's a oh, that statement. No, no, no. That, that, trust me, that's what it means. It resides in the body. Sorry? No, 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 no. That, that's a definition. That's a definition. That's a definition from Bouvier's Law Dictionary. Sovereignty resides in the body of the people. That's in the USA, but is that also in New Zealand? That's that's worldwide. <laughs> Hope I've clarified that. That is worldwide. Sovereignty. Everyone has their sovereignty. Now, I explained that in the first video. You must claim it. How did you claim it? I've given you all the papers to do it. You've got the application form in there to get your printout. Okay. The ruler or royal head of a state, the Constitution Act 1986, Section 2.1, provides that the sovereign in right of New Zealand is the head of state. The sovereign in right of New Zealand is the head of state of New Zealand and shall be known by the Royal Styles and Titles Act. Section 2.2 provides that the Governor General, appointed by the sovereign, is the sovereign's representative in New Zealand. Now, I want you to take particular notice of that that the governor general appointed by the sovereign where does sovereignty reside in the body of the people appointed by the sovereign is the sovereign's representative so if you appoint the governor general once you've declared your sovereignty Oops, <laughs> the penny's dropped. Okay, people just read through these acts and don't see what it is, okay? That the Governor General appointed by you is your representative in New Zealand. But that's not us appointing him. That's the name of the company of New Okay, the Miners' Contracts Act. If you read this act, you will see that you can't, you can't go into contract unless you have declared your sovereignty. The first thing to do is declare. Everything must be made by declaration and it must be your will. Uh, I think I've made that pretty abundantly clear. Subject to the provisions of this section, every contract other than a contract to which paragraph B or paragraph C of subsection 5.1 applies, entered into a minor, is unenforceable against the minor, but otherwise has effect as if the minor were of full age. So they can enforce it, but you can't. They're tricky, I tell you, they're tricky. The court may, in the course of any proceedings or an application made for the 
purpose, inquire into the fairness and reasonableness of any contract to which subsection 1 applies at the time the contract was entered into, and if it finds that any such contract was fair and reasonable at that time, it shall not be obliged to make any order, but it may in its discretion enforce the contract against the minor. And that's what they do all the time. But we don't have that ability until we declare our sovereignty and make ourselves sovereign by returning our documents of title. Okay, we already covered that. Bovius tells us that sovereignty resides in the body of the people. So we need to know what people is. Crowds of people, human beings, persons, individuals, humans, mortals, souls. <laughs> souls? <laughs> <laughs> Personages, men and women and children, informal folks. The American people, citizens, subjects, electors, voters. A man of the people, common people. Are you in there somewhere? You've got to be in there somewhere, don't you? So does sovereignty reside in you? Yep. Pretty clear, isn't it? Butterworth tells us the sovereign is the ruler or royal head of a state. A sovereign state, an entity within the, with the attributes of statehood, namely a defined territory, permanent population, effective government. Okay, now that's a sovereign state. See the Consular Privileges and Immunities Act 1971. Appointments, arrivals and departures. Now, all night I've banged on about declaration told you back in 1835 that the Maori chiefs got together and made a declaration. What happens every time you enter New Zealand or any other country? Declarate. Have you anything to declare? Yes, I'm a sovereign. No. <laughs> No, I've got nothing. Oh, I've got a few things in my pocket, but I don't want you to know that. Yes, I'm a sovereign. I'm free to go, am I? Thank you. They've made us afraid of all these things. Anything to declare because they, you know you're going to have to pay duty if you declare anything. They've turned the tables on us. Now by learning the words, we're slowly turning the tables. Turn to, the, turn to the form in your um, printout there, the application for birth certificate. There's an application in there, the form, the form that you need. Keep going towards the back. Hey? The application? Oh, crikey, it didn't come out. Sorry. I'll show it to you on the screen. Ah, there was a few pages didn't come out on the um, on the copy for some reason. Sorry, my apologies. On the form, um, I'll, I'll send them through to you, Vinnie. Um, on the form, on the back page, it says declaration. Now, I just made a declaration to get my RG142 and where it said name I put Christian then it says name if different from when registered so then I put my put the name that was registered okay so they actually give it all away to you there they're giving you the opportunity to get out of the system. That's why my RG142 won't come back. They don't particularly want to have me being what I want to be. Oh yeah, I'm sure you can. But I, I don't think I'll go to that bother. I'm, I'm now going to concentrate on the private area. State of mind. Okay, so we're going through royal head of a state state, state of mind, a person's belief, thought, perception, intention, purpose or will. 
everything is done by declaration of your will. Reigning. The reigning monarch ruling regent or the throne. On the throne. So we're finding lots of different things here, but who really is the crown? Here we go. Any trustee, executor, or administrator may sue and be sued in a court in like manner as if he were a party in his own right. So they're suing you acting as if he were a party in his own right. They're coming in as agents for the crown, the crown which is you. And that's why when they're very careful when they stand up in court, they don't say, I'm the crown. They stand up and say, Bill on behalf of the crown. Generally for the crown. For the crown. Some of them say on behalf of the crown. Some say for the crown. Okay. without joining any of the parties being officially interested and shall be considered as representing such parties in the proceedings. He's only representing the Crown. He's only representing you. He's representing you. The court may at any stage of the proceedings order any, any of such parties to be made parties to the proceeding either in addition to or in lieu of the previously existing parties. So at some stage, once you've hopped up and said the right words, bang, they've joined you as the trustee, which I told you in the first video was the trustee always pays, and you don't want to be the trustee. Trustees always pay. You want to be the beneficiary. Trust me. For all these years, we have thought that Queen Elizabeth was the crown. But in reality, we're all crowns. Every one of us. They're the agents for us.